Hi everyone, this is John Dickinson, back with a Cinema 4D modeling tutorial for you. I've just been working on this work boot. This is the sole here. Let me just unsolo everything else. And it's looking pretty good. I'm still yet to finalize the sculpting of the laces to make sure there's no intersections there. But I'm getting close to finishing it. And I decided to go in and just jump off of the laces and just work on the sole a little bit more. I've gone through and started adding some details into the sole and I subdivided it because I felt that the level of detail now that I want to add required me to have an extra level of subdivision. Let me just turn on the unsolid that let's turn on the original version. So this is the unsubdivided version. And of course when you're working on something like this it's fairly organic and you want to keep the edge loops as minimal as possible so that you don't introduce any unnecessary lumps and bumps. I want to make sure this can be as smooth as possible. And only when you want to start adding more detail do you start adding more edge loops. And I'm at a stage now where everything's looking pretty good. It's pretty clean. Uh, I've, able, I've been able to go in and add as much detail as I can at this subdivision level. It's all looking really nice. There's no lumps and bumps. And I'm ready now to go in and subdivide it and start adding in that extra level of detail. I've got a reference image here. You can see here that if I just zoom in, there's these little details here inside this inset. And I tried to add these at the original subdivision level, but of course, in order to get these nice and sharp and tight, that required me to add more edge loops and all of those extra edge, loop, edge loops were introducing lumps and bumps into my nice smooth curvature. So it's important to understand at what stage you need to add more edge loops in order to add more detail. You don't start out with the final amount of edge loops. You build it in as you go when you want to start adding more detail. I hope that makes sense. So what I've done is I've added in as much detail as I can and I was ready to subdivide so I went in and subdivided let me just unsolid that again bring this guy back so I dropped that into its own subdivision surface object and I subdivided at a level of one and you can see it's added more loops everything's still nice and smooth and that gives me more geometry to play with and holds all of that curvature in shape and it allows me to start coming in and separating parts and pulling it out and then having enough geometry and enough edge and enough edge loops to be able to stitch that back in and not introduce any more lumps and bumps and when I did that I realized that I hadn't actually put in these uh, insets into the toe now I could have done these at the previous subdivision level that's these insets here and as I mentioned, I could have done them at the previous subdivision level, but it's just as easy to do them at this subdivision level. But what I did notice afterwards was that, if you just come down to the bottom of the toe, you can see that this bottom inset is slightly different. It's angled in, so it's actually fairly smooth at the bottom, and then it's angled in. And that and having that extra geometry actually introduces some complications in being able to do this cleanly. And that's why I decided to record this tutorial because I was working on it, thinking about how I could possibly do it. And um, I worked out a way of doing that. And this would have been the same actually at the previous subdivision level. I would have used the same technique. So let's take a look. So I have that section selected, those polygons. So how am I going to do this? Well, first of all, I want to disconnect this section. So I'm going to just click on this button down here, disconnect. And we know that's disconnected because if I just drag it, you can see that's now disconnected. And my first thought was to maybe rotate that. So we just grab the rotate tool going to hold down L just so I can click and move my axis. And if I rotate that back, 
it's not doing what you expect. It's not going to give us the desired result. So that's no good. I'm going to move these back on their normals by pressing MZ. Just shift them back about the same distance as the top insets. Be about there. Looks about right. So now what I have to do is stitch these bottom polygons back together. But I just need this nice smooth transition from the bottom one through to the top one. And you can see I've got curvature in here as well. So I could very easily mess this up. And of course, having that extra geometry in here just complicates the whole issue. So what I need to do is reduce this geometry and then reintroduce the geometry when I've done what I need to do. And I don't want to remove the vertical loops, but I can remove the horizontal loops and then reintroduce those afterwards. So I'm going to just double click just to select all of these and dissolve them. MN. And you can see that makes things a little more flexible, but I have lost that curvature. Never mind, I'm going to introduce that back in a moment. So what I can do now is double click that and double click that and use stitch and sew. And I've usually got it down here in my toolbar, but it's missing because I'm working at a smaller screen resolution. So shift C, stitch and sew, that's MP, I should remember that. And just stitch this back to here. Oops, let's see if I can get that to work properly. Make sure everything's selected properly. Try that again. Doesn't always work the way you expected at first. Of course, it worked great when I was practicing it. There we go. Okay, so now we've got that nice, smooth transition from the inset at the top to no inset at the bottom, which is great. But we need to now reintroduce that curvature that we lost when we dissolved those horizontal loops. So I can do that by using the slide tool, MO, and make sure that preserve curvature is turned on. Control drag, and you can see that's adding back in the curvature. Just gonna get those lined up as close as I can. And another one. So don't be afraid to remove geometry and then reintroduce geometry in order to be able to create the effect that you require. This is what I love about modeling is um, working out a technique like this that works. It doesn't have to be exactly the same curvature as the other part of the boot, the other part of the toe. Because remember, this has been inset, so it could, for all intents and purposes, have been flattened a little bit when it was inset. Let's just preview that. Can't quite see it. Okay, so let's just turn off this sole. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So now, of course, I have to stitch these all back together. I should be able to use stitch and sew for this. So just select here. Select here. And here and here. I should be able to use stitch and sew again. So what did we say? It was MP, wasn't it? MP, good idea to practice using your shortcuts. Let's see if we can get this to work. I'll try once more, otherwise we can use bridge. All right, I'm gonna bridge this. I'm going to pause until I finish that. Okay, so I've bridged that now. Just do a little preview. Okay, looking good. Now, of course, doing that introduces a triangle. Let me just go to my settings here. Actually, it's, it's Control D for project settings. Now, I want to just change my view clipping from large to small. That way I can zoom in further. You can see I have a triangle here and it probably isn't even a problem. 
but if you really really wanted to get rid of it you could just add a loop in here KL I want it to be hit here like this I want to change that to proportional just like that and of course that does make that a quad just like that MO point mode So we have introduced the quad there, which is nice. And it does obviously sharpen that up a little bit. Depends how sharp you want it. I think on the I think on the actual boot, it is fairly sharp. Yeah, you know it's borderline. Um, what I could also do is, um, you know, I could shift this edge. In a little bit and that would soften that so obviously it's up to you as a modeler to decide whether you're okay with that triangle or not but that's one way to get rid of it and there we go now it's probably not deep enough well if I wanted to make it deeper then of course I'm gonna to have to go back and then push that in because obviously if I grab that all now I just use normal move then I'm going to introduce a inset down the bottom, which is exactly what I don't want. So I think it might be a case of actually just removing moving that edge. That should do it. Yeah, it's probably not quite deep enough. It's not too bad. But um, you get the idea. So hopefully that's been useful. For now, this is John Dickinson. I'll see you in another tutorial.